uh, let's create new. Uh, let's just do it here. Geometry new box. And let's have a look. Do our render cam again. I think we want it. Kind of over here. Let's enlarge it a bit. Yeah, we need to come in just like this. And that's quite similar. <clears throat> Let's move this here. And new cloud. Select our box. Uh, um, Let's parent this. And let's create a couple hundred points. And let's scatter some geo in these as well. And so this takes a little while to set up all of these um, different parts. However, once you do, you can achieve pretty good results pretty quickly. Um, I mean, this didn't take very long and we already have a good chunk of the image filled and it's very easy to adjust what we're doing as we go and so <clears throat> I think let's take this and again I'm trying to remember how I previously did it I'm pretty sure I uh, okay maybe let's just copy this that's another way to do it um, quite similar and you know if you copy a scatter and you kind of want to change the distribution of all the geometry so it looks slightly different but without changing the number of points uh, what you could do is just change this to maybe you know one of the objects probability to 20% and this completely changes the way everything is scattered and it still uses the same point cloud it's just we've transformed it um, so, if I change this point out to 400, it actually affects both this cutter and this cutter. And, you know, there's a lot of cool ways like like that uh, in, in how you can make your image quite diverse. So, you know, here I took this cutter and I baked it and I put it here. Here I did uh, something different and it's sort of just having the creativity to play around with these different options. So, in addition to this, Let's create a background city. New context BG city. And yeah, let's create a new box again. Argue. Let's make this quite big. So for the background, Basically, my way of working is that I put a lot more effort into the things that are in the foreground. And in, in the background, we can get away with a lot more because obviously it's much uh, smaller on the screen, you know. This is a huge box. If this box was here, it'd be massive. But when we put it way over there, it doesn't take up much space. So we can get away with a lot. So let's just, actually, let's make it even bigger. <clears throat> maybe this big. I want this to cover a huge part of the city. Something like that. And let me create a new um, point cloud again. Select this box. And also oops, let's parent to this box. And let's make a thousand points. And let's just scatter some geometry on that. Cool. <clears throat> Maybe even more. A couple of thousand. Cool. 
cool. And actually, in this scatter, we could, because at that distance, it's quite hard to tell what is what. So we could probably play around with scale variance quite a bit. And, you know, really add some variety that way. That's kind of cool. Maybe one there. Now maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe 0 0.5. Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. And even can merge it in here. Yeah, that's quite similar to what I had. So let me take this. And actually, let's see. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I'll just bake it a few times. At this distance, I don't really care about any anyone noticing that look, this looks similar because I don't think anyone will. Um, it's quite different. Let's put this here. Let's maybe put this here. And let's just control C, control V to copy this. And out. Maybe we can rotate this 90 degrees to throw off anyone looking at it and make it look different. <coughs> Maybe put it there. Let's see through the camera. Yeah, cool. Then we can just Copy this a few times. And in fact, because the bottom of this also has a lot of detail, we might as well bring it here and use it for the top part of our city. Let's see what. Actually, you know what we could do? We could split this. Select 3D view here. And view through our render camera. And here we want to browse scene. So we're seeing everything. So let's see. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm just doing this because um, in this view I cannot see my uh, manipulator. So it's hard to tell what I'm doing. Uh, but if we move this here, that's quite cool. Yep. Yeah, that's quite similar to what I want. Maybe let's... Yeah, let's do this slightly differently. Let's this whole chunk here. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to think as I'm working of my lead-in lines. So I'll want one of my focal points to be here and the other one around here. And I'm kind of also trying to think of rule of thirds. If you think this is the canvas, our top line will be here, then one will be here, and then here, and here. So we'll want focuses of interest to be here, 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 and here. And I'm kind of just trying to make the composition work with those kind of ideas. Maybe let's do this a little bit like this. <clears throat> and I'll try to make a little bit more space up top. Uh, yeah, something like this. And let's copy this again. Something like this. A little bit more. And again. Yeah, I think this is quite similar to what I had in my original image. 
I think if anything, maybe one more, the last one. Yeah, something like this. And here, I'll want to add something else as well, similar to this, just to close this off. You know how when you take a photograph, you have the vignette effect where the corners are darker? I'm trying to do this with just naturally laying out the elements so that uh, the corners have something that can be shadowed and I really want to draw the attention sort of towards the middle here where there will be light so let's block this off as well <clears throat> uh, I think maybe first of all let's take this and oops and bring it down a bit and yeah something slightly more like this this looks more similar to what I want let's take this and bring it a little bit that way and you know you can play around with this for a long time so don't worry about being too accurate to what I'm doing. This is just to show you the general kind of basis for, for how I work and what I think is a clean way of working. So from the very start it's good to have the different parts of your image split out so you will have more control later, later when making render passes when wanting to select bits of geometry. And that is the main thing um, that I'm kind of trying to convey with, with this exercise is that you know, you can work in a modular way and still have a lot of fun with scattering, but have it be easy to control for later. So let's just finish this off by adding a, a last box. <clears throat> let's just make it bigger. Cool. And let's create a new point cloud. And one last time select the box. We want to disable inheriting transforms, select the box and then enable them. And let's make 500 points. And let's make a new scatter, which will link to the point cloud and once again add all of our kit bash geometries. So let's take this and let's move it to the side yep that's exactly what I want pretty much very cool I think maybe one last thing was we could take we could take this scatterer Slightly here. Yeah, maybe. Let's go back to our this part, and let's just um, bake this and move the copy. Oops. Something like this. Okay. And I think one last step that I've forgotten about is that I think I took this tower and I copied it. And let me, basically you can drag. Uh, say, you know, I want to put this in the city folder. I can just uh, click it, hold, and drag it into the city folder. And so now I have it here. And I want to click right click on it, contextualize, and I'll call this midground towers. And this is just for having some extra towers in places where I want them. <clears throat> so 
let me put one here maybe I'll, oops. maybe I'll stretch it out a little bit can't grab it there you go and maybe I'll uh, rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis just so it looks slightly different put one there and make a copy <clears throat> I'll put another one there and maybe one last one somewhere in the distance over there just to have a little bit more variety that way let me select this scatterer that I had here and move it a little bit more that way and here we have it the basic layout done very quickly uh, this took what less than half an hour and we have something very cool already all right so now in the next lesson let's have a look at trying to create a basic light setup and then to bring that into photoshop afterwards so we can play around with uh, the basic setup that we have and see how we can improve it uh, in the concept stage. Now in this next lesson I will revert to the layout that I had in my original image. The reason that this is slightly different is because I'm working through it a second time and when working with scatterers and working with thousands of points it's very hard to make sure that you get an identical image a second time but all of the techniques that I used uh, were exactly the same and I made sure to lay everything out in exactly the same way and the old folders and everything so uh, you're not going to have missed anything.